parenting is hard. Being a partner is hard. Marriage is hard. Relationships are hard. Friendships are hard. It's all incredible and rewarding and, and lovely, but it's not easy. Hey, Heal Squad, we are back for part two with Marissa Gold. We're talking brain-based development. And today we are talking all about authoritative versus authoritarian uh, styles of parenting of parenting, yeah. and what that will do to your child, potentially. A lot of big revelations for me. So let's get into this chat. It's interesting also how people define rebelling because I also have a lot of kids that come out of authoritative homes and they've been allowed to really express themselves and explore their identities. And someone might look at them and say, oh, they're rebelling because of the way they dress. But no, their parents are really reinforcing this idea that, you know, this is the time in your life when you're supposed to be figuring out who your identity is and, and what, you know, who you are. And so go explore and express yourself in ways because it comes full circle. And I've seen that. I've seen kids, you know, know literally run the gamut from being very overprotected as very young children they go out into the world and they some people would say they're rebelling I just say they're expressing themselves you know they try a lot of different things looks um, what they put in their body how they learn etc and then I've seen them come full circle as you know going off to college or even in college and they come back to the values and the things that mattered as young children mm. and it's you know and they become their own person, but you can see that that foundation was there and that it was important. Wow. So many things are going through my <laughs> head right now, like going back to childhood. And I I'm feel sure. like I feel like I, everyone thought I would rebel because my parents were so strict, mm. but I didn't. What were I, you scared to rebel? I was or terrified. Scared to, to express yourself? Terrified of all of the above. Yeah. But I also was like, when I'm 18, it's going my way. Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever you say now. But when I turn 18, I mean, I used to joke with my dad, I'm going to post for Playboy. I'm going to do, <laughs> I was trying to like, let him know yeah, that you were gonna what's away. coming. Yeah. So did you? No. And not the Playboy thing. But I did didn't. You, but I did didn't. <laughs> but I was, I was doing the extremes. I was saying anything extreme I could to let him know, like, I love you, but I'm going to make my decisions at some point. Mm. And I know I have to do it your way right mm, now. You did. And I did. Um, and some things he didn't like. Like, I post for sexy magazines. Like, mm -hmm. it, I wasn't naked, but. Right. Some things? What are you talking about? He didn't like a lot of things. Yeah. He didn't like a lot of things that, the career decisions. Of course. You know, he, so. And, so, hard and it parent. was, it was challenging. Now he does. But it is, it is um, really helpful to know bec what you're talking about now and raising my baby, because there's a side of me that's always said, well, I turned out fine, mm. but I've never heard the health issues part of it. And oh, obviously, no? I've no already ever talked with you about any of that. Never. You're kidding. Marissa, me. I've already had cancer. I have multiple autoimmune conditions. I've had a brain tumor. I've and had no, none of your doctors have ever talked to you about your childhood and how you grew up. And no, they don't have time for that stuff. Right. Doctors don't have time oh, for that. And by the way, my doctor actually gives me so much time. I shouldn't say that. I'm generalizing yeah. and so people yeah, yeah. understand. In general, doctors don't. Yes, but, I agree. But no, I mean, that takes somebody yeah. who's a specialist yeah. in the area that you're in Mental to really health. know that. Yeah. I don't think they're teaching what you're learning in just general medical they're school. They're not. I mean, I so think. So how would they know? Yeah. That's why we have Heal Squad. Heal so squad. people can learn this right. stuff. Because yeah. I would think that I need to be as strict as my parents were with me to give her the protection she needs to grow up in in a safe chamber, right? Because mm -hmm. I watched, I watched mm -hmm. my parents be super strict about dating and all mm -hmm. these things so that I didn't end up pregnant like mm -hmm. other kids in my class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so can I tell you an interesting story? Yeah. So I have a 17 year old who is obviously, you know, she's a senior in high school and going off to college next year and in the dating world, which is a crazy world to be in these days. And this summer, um, it was interesting because I haven't been super strict with her. My ex and I have been, for the most part, we're, we're pretty liberal with our children because we trust them and we've given them, we have always said we will trust you until we cannot trust you, until you do something that will that breaks that trust. And so they've always been really good about telling us where they are, et cetera, right? And um, they've never had a curfew. And we've always known where they are and what's going on and who their friends are. And my I'm, my girls have a great relationship with me. I'm very fortunate. I know like when they've been interested in a boy and when something has happened or when it hasn't. 
And um, this summer, she, there was an an interest in someone. And she wasn't really telling me that much for the first time. And I was, I wasn't upset. I was like, okay, this is, you know, she's 17. It's okay. But we have, um, I, I serve in the summer as the director of mental health for staff at a camp. And so there was another staff member there who said to me, I, I said to this person, you know, I'm concerned about my daughter. And this person said to me, you do not need to be concerned about her. She has such a good head on her shoulders. She came to me and was telling me about what was going on with this boy and that she didn't have time for it. She valued herself too much. She was not going to fall into the trap of, you know, doing certain things to get his attention. Wow, and at 17. At 17. And I just thought to myself, it's because of the conversations that we've had. And not that I'm patting myself on the back. It also comes from her environment and the conversations she's had with her friends and her school environment and, you know, where we've grown up and who we've introduced her to. And it's a whole, it's everything to, you know, we are, we are an accumulation of our experiences to date. And so it's not just us. But for sure, a large part of it, my point in explaining this, a large part of it is because she was given the freedom to find out who she was in a home where she was allowed to express herself she was allowed to have her emotions and her um and share what she felt even when we didn't agree we gave her a space to talk openly and where we respected her and so she then respected us my point in sharing this is that you don't have to have a home that is authoritarian in order to raise a child that values themselves is independent is responsible that you can trust that you can send out into the world and know that they're gonna be okay i hate that she's going to college next year but i hate that because i'm sad that she's leaving i love her just like you love athena you know the idea of not having being able to see her every day is terrifying but I also know that she is going to be fine wherever she goes. And that feeling, knowing as a parent that your kid can go out into the world and they're going to be good, there's nothing more important than that for a parent, I think. Yeah. I think. I mean, I think of like going to college and how young we really are yeah. at that age. Yeah. And how little you know. And how easy it could have been for something bad to happen. And now I look at it and I'm like, how did my parents even do it? I, I'm terrified for m future me, mm -hmm. your current you, <laughs> yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, this is why I'm on a constant journey to growing and learning because I, I needed to hear all of this today. I needed to know that there are severe consequences, not just the anxiety and, and all of the things that I know my brother and I suffered from. My, my dad almost died every day, like with his type 1 diabetes. So we were on pins and needles constantly. Mm -hmm. God, um, that's, and that talk about PTSD from that. Right. And how and we know that when we have long term stress, how that affects us internally, mm -hmm. you know, it manifests typically in physical in a, in a physical manifestation. You know, you get headaches, you get stomach aches, you get body pains. Um, you know, there's a condition that's affecting a lot of women in their mid and later life called fibromyalgia. Yeah, there are, there's a lot of studying behind fibromyalgia being really something that is caused by our surrounding and our environment and what we've been exposed to. Yeah, I know. It's really scary to think that just that parenting technique could create so much illness in a body. And, you know, I, I look think at... about what you held in, not to interrupt you, but think yeah. about the, what you held in forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then I remember when I went to college, the guilt that I wasn't going to be there to save my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I mean, every night I would cry and I would be in such fear of losing him mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, I'm being selfish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary. It's, it's really crazy. Scary. Oof, yeah. Like... And to think about how that I mean, you know, consciously, you know, <laughs> Can I have that tissue <laughs> you know consciously how you feel and how that felt when you were in it. Yeah. But what you don't know is how that's subconsciously affecting your body. Yeah. Right? Now I know. Now you know. Now I know fight yeah. or flight can't be sustained yeah. for yeah. such a long time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Nat, I'm wondering, you must have a thousand questions because you have a son as well. But also, I don't know what your upbringing was like and if any of this relates. It, yeah, it definitely relates. I mean, my upbringing was my mom. I, my mom got uh, early onset dementia when I was 10. 
So, you know, living with that wow. and my dad was a peach, but <laughs> <laughs> we just put it that way. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I've i followed Marissa and she's given me advice. Um, we met because <clears throat> she was referred to me um, to help Dylan and so incredibly helpful. And even listening to her today, I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to brush up on that. Yeah. I need to do that. But even Dylan once had a babysitter and he was the babysitter was talking to him. She was so awesome. And he had just started talking, like, not just started talking, but it started, like, you know, really expressing himself. And he told her that his mommy had taught him all about emotions. Wow. And I was just like, that's exactly it. Like, mm -hmm. that's what we need in the world. Like, we need to understand where our kids are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how do we do that without, but with at the same time, discipline? So mm -hmm. they're not running our lives. Yeah, no, that's such a great question. Um, and I just want to say really quickly what just to add on to what Natasha was saying is it's a gift, right? When there are all these material things that we give our children and their experiences that we give them. But really, the biggest gift that you can give your child is to teach them about their emotions, how to talk about their emotions, how to be around people who are emotional and also to teach them how to, in developmentally appropriate ways, deal with that. And that's where positive discipline comes in, right? So when I'm working with parents or giving a talk about this or doing teacher trainings or whatever I do, you know, it's really educating. I believe so much in educating adults so that they can be the educators of their yeah. children. Um, and it is a combination. It is not just giving your kids, you know, to answer your question, Maria, it is not just um, saying, I can see you're upset, you can be upset, right? And that is that is the fail. I, I will use that word, and it is a very big word, but there is so much trending awareness towards let your kids have their feelings yes. and let them be vulnerable, and right? But the follow-up piece to that is teaching them how to developmentally in a developmentally appropriate way handle their emotions and that is where positive discipline comes in that is and that is to answer your question that is how we teach them what is okay what is not okay um, and so much of that comes from how we discipline them right like I don't believe in timeouts for example positive discipline the way I teach it does not believe in that I do believe in time ins what that means is you have to notice, you have to be aware when your child is escalating and give them time in dedicated, one-on-one, -on -one, devoted attention with you at their level, doing something that they want or they need in that moment to de-escalate whatever emotions are climbing to help them so that you can basically help them with their emotions before it gets to that point where some parents would put them in a timeout or they would have a tantrum or yeah. they would have in some kind of emotional outburst. When you, when you do the positive discipline and you work from a place of emotion coaching, you can teach them how to handle their emotions. You can teach them self-soothing techniques. You can teach them right from wrong in a healthy way, right? Putting a child in a timeout at any age, by the way, even a teenager taking away their keys because they, you know, came home late. That doesn't teach them why you were scared that they came home late, right? So we need to think about natural consequences. That's a part of positive discipline. With babies, when a, when a baby runs, you know, or not a baby, but if a toddler comes in and knocks down a tower that their sibling built, there's a way that we handle that so that they understand they can't keep doing that. That's not okay. But just saying no to them or putting them in a timeout, that is not a natural consequence to so knocking over a tower. They will not be able to make the um, the, the, the correlation is not there for them. And, you know, we have to remember their brain is not online the way our brain is online. They're not able to think about it the way that we are able to think about it. So we give them a consequence that makes no sense to them. So therefore, it doesn't stick. There's no buy-in. There's no understanding for why they have that consequence. So what is the consequence, like if they came in and knocked over the tower? Yeah. So the first thing is to talk to them about it, right? How would you feel if your brother knocked over your tower? If you built that tower and Sammy came in and knocked that out, that tower over, how do you feel? I, you know, they're going to say, I don't like it. I don't want them to. I, I'm mad. I'm angry, right? Okay, well, that's how your brother is feeling right now. Let's help him rebuild his tower and then we're going to go and we're going to do something else. So it's about understanding. But I don't want to. But I don't want to what? I'm, I'm being the kid. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to. 
that's not the option, right? Kevin's so. doing a motion for a backhander. <laughs> Honey. I house grew up. Yeah, that's when you just got using, backhand. You got the backhand. Strap. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I'm getting yeah, the strap. Okay. I hear that you don't want to, but in this home, we don't knock over someone else's hard work. Someone and now I start screaming. No! Yeah. And I'm so, having a tantrum. Yeah. So it depends on the age of the child, right? Second so we're, backhander. Yeah. So we're <laughs> so we're getting into specifics. And this is why when I do when I go into homes, like there's a lot of background information that I have to get and I have to know your parenting styles, right? So it's hard to just have like a general answer to this. But what I would say is um, and we're also starting to get into sibling rivalry, right? But what I would say is, like, you can remove a child, you know, if that child is screaming and disrupting your other child's peaceful, calm play, you can pick up that child and you can say, I see you're really upset. We're going to go in the other room so that Sammy can continue playing and we'll talk about this. I w and or I would add in, so Sammy can have the most amazing, fun time <laughs> playing with all these unbelievable and, toys. And, and, and you're going to... And we'll just go in the other room. Yeah. And, with, and no honestly, with all the yeah, other people yeah. that, you know... And by the way, that is... Can't play that, well with others. And that's when it turns into a manipulation tantrum, right? Because that child wants to be able to do what they want to do. And so removing them from the situation and not giving them positive attention, right? So you're not going to sit down and play with that child because then if you do, that teaches them that if they do something bad, they're going to get mommy attention. Yeah. But you take them out of the room and you plop them down and say, when you're calm, we'll talk. And you walk away. You make sure they're safe. You make sure that they can't hurt themselves or someone else. You separate the kids and you walk away. Because we don't attend to kids when they are not at their best, quote best. I'm putting quotes around best. Yeah. You know, oh, sibling rivalry. You're making sibling a rivalry. case for no no number two. Oh, no. I think that having having siblings is, is also a gift that you can give your children. Um, but, you know. There are pros and cons to being an only child as well. Oh, so. my goodness. <laughs> I wished I was an only child for so long. Really? Oh, my God. I wished it so hard. Why? Because my brother was challenging. Oh. <laughs> you have one brother? Yes. He's more than enough. Okay. But I will say this. Older, my, younger? My ex younger. My experience as a regular guy, uh, parenting expert, yes. Marissa. Yes. Uh, sometimes when one of the children overachieves and shines so brightly, it really is difficult. Yes. I always say there's a Bill yeah. Clinton and a Roger Clinton. Yeah. There's a Billy Carter and a Jimmy Carter. Yeah, absolutely. Just in my experience. Yeah. And it's the other one. Uh, is not getting the light, so they go another way okay. maybe to get it. Absolutely, and you're 100% right, and that absolutely does happen with children all the time. Um, and I see it all the time. Wow. Yeah. I, but happy uh, endings, it's all worked out now. I I'm, wonder... Are you close now? I'm yeah, curious. Yes. Oh, um, we are um, able to coexist. Okay. Oh, Maria, I let am, me handle this, please, Marissa. Go ahead. Yes. There we we are in the rebuild process. We're in the rebuild, and it gets it gets a little better every day. Okay. And it's been this it's been bumpy awesome. for the past uh, five years is when the reconciliation <clears throat> began, mm -hmm. and it's been, you know, it's difficult because we're in this this world. Mm -hmm. You're in this world. You've mm -hmm. come onto this onto mm -hmm. campus here, yeah. right? It's not an average world yes. or universe. Yeah. Okay, so for for a sibling that has Let's not been that. near this world in twenty years, right? It's so foreign, how we behave, how we interact, how we operate, just everything. Yeah. So it's... Uh, yeah, like he stayed here once and we left. I mean, they just leave? Like they don't say anything? <laughs> We're like, no, we don't need your permission, actually. Right. Okay. <laughs> but, so it's been... It's nice that I'm an I'm outside degree that I, I've been able to moderate this. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, he's ride or die, which is... Mm -hmm very he has East good Coast, qualities that i'm trying to focus on and um and that's very precious he's very loyal and uh he would do anything for her and certainly i know for his niece and uh that's something i can work with yeah, every yeah. day of the week because yeah. there's so little of that in the world i have empathy for so. him and and i feel bad so I yeah. always forgive, no, and then i get slapped in the face you have not recently well i'm surprised you're putting that out there you guys have been doing great together honey we were just together months ago. It was a nightmare. And since then, what? Okay, then it was fine. Like, <laughs> it's been. Oh, since then, I haven't okay, seen him. But, I've, I've but, just communicated okay, with But again, yes. without getting so bougie Natasha's on. dying but inside the getting, booth right now. But without getting really bougie. People laugh at my honesty Wait, about all yeah, this. But don't, but don't make me paint the real <laughs> picture of where he was and how foreign that all was to him. Okay. 
I mean, oh, here we go. Good. You want to go there? I'm I'm on a somebody's boat that's the size of the freaking love boat right. with like six people. Yeah. And the staff out, right. outnumbered us. Right. So her brother's walking into this thing. He's like, what? What's happening? Yeah. So he's not a four. Yeah. And, he, and, and for me, now Maria I'm like, her, you should just be so grateful. Okay, right. But Maria. To be a her, part of something like that. And just your dad behave. has been on these boats forever. The last 20 years, he's been on the fairy tale journey with us. Maria yeah. certainly has too. Yeah. And I've had friends from home who've had to come in come into the I've seen it before. So it just was a lot. And then everyone's team Maria. So think of the childhood yeah. dramas I'm that kidding. get retriggered. <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot. So it's he, a lot, yeah. It was you know No, he was he was sick. He got sick. He was in the hospital, Which, so he was very He clunky. actually got physically Him ill. Him and my dad don't yeah. get along. So then they we had we Lots started with their issues. Then he got sick. So it was like you couldn't be appreciative of this from go. You're fighting with my poor dad who does yeah. not need a fight. And then from there, you know, it just kept going. And and listen, there's they have their issues that whatever. So I have to be empathetic to that. I have to be empathetic to all of it. But P.S. And the ended everyone, up, and you know the happy what you ending need? is? I'm telling you, you know, you, just because I'm sitting here listening. Because I volume. What? No. <laughs> no, I, honey, your the pillow is <laughs> no, going over just, your head. I want you all to say goodbye no, to Kevin suggestion. right now. Just Kevin has suggestion. been canceled. <laughs> Kevin is not going to be with us much longer because <laughs> I'm going to take his life tonight. <laughs> um, it's interesting. I just have to say because I work with uh, quite a few celebrity clientele, and this is something that I hear a lot. And one of the things I always say is there needs to be like a support group that's just like where you guys can For come. celebrities yes. and their siblings? Yes. No yes. way. I swear. Yeah, there does. Be. Oh my God. Oh. Really I'm in. Be. Because the thing is, it's exactly what you said, right? It's like you're the golden child just by the nature of what you do, right? Whether you asked for it or not, you have a life that you are blessed to have and to be a part of, but it's also hard work. And by the way, a lot of people who have never seen the behind the scenes of the entertainment industry, don't understand yeah. the work that goes into this. They don't yeah. understand that this is a job, that you are a real person, that you have a real family. And even family doesn't always understand that, mm -hmm. right? And I see this quite often, actually. Well, I think, um, oh God, I think a lot of things. But <laughs> I think- Bringing up a lot for you. A lot of people are always like, I can't believe you're so open about it. But I feel like it's such a- uh, like a taboo thing I love that, that it's it's important to share and you know it's you know I, I really am trying I'm always mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. but I think that he went one way for attention I went the other mm -hmm. I self-soothed with self-help books mm -hmm. he self-soothed with other things mm -hmm. and so yeah. we went two very different ways yeah. and I do have a, I feel really 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 bad which is why I always try and no matter what, I'm always going to try. I just have to take my breaks because I need my own mental health. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like I've learned a lot about myself today through this process. <laughs> I definitely would love to know, do you have courses that you share with people for, for brain-based development? Um, so if you I don't, don't, you should. I, so I don't have courses. I do private one-on-one -on -one consulting in person and, and via Zoom. Um, I speak publicly at different places. Um, I do workshops, but it's mostly in person. I'm in the process of writing a book right now. So Great. yeah. Um, you know, one of the things about all of the stuff that I do is that so much of it is experiential, you know, is, is better learned because you've gone through it right? The quote that we started with, I was a great mom until I had kids, that it's so, <laughs> it's so resonated with me because, and I'm sure it probably resonates with almost every parent mm -hmm. out there, you know, like I thought I knew, you don't know what you don't know, right? And so I, I feel that way even about what I teach and how I coach and when I go in and whether I'm working with parents of a newborn or a toddler or an older child or whether I'm doing mental health coaching with a teenager, um, it's so much better for me to be in person or to be yeah. at least face to face. And so, look, I've taken tons of courses. I love education. I love educating myself, just like the self help. You know, I, I think that's so important. But for what I do, it's, I think that the information transfers in the best way yeah. in this way. Right. Yeah. I, I can see that. It's almost like, um, 
like dog trainers have to be in person, in person. with the dog yeah. to yeah. to train. Yeah. Um, I will say there's a side of me that feels a little defeated right now. Why? Because I feel like like Kevin and I have been talking a lot about you know overcoming some of these things that like you know even the just like these small triggers that since I've gotten off my meditations like now are just loud mm. right I'm getting back on my meditation wheel mm-hmm. I've gotten off since surgery mm-hmm. but these these little teeny things that just you know set you off and and you know it's all past traumas and I feel like I've done so much work and I'm like, is it ever going to be healed? And yeah. I feel like anybody who's listening right now is probably thinking the same thing. Like if this stuff happened at such a young age and for such a prolonged amount of time mm-hmm. that then for me just per- just continued in the workplace because the bosses were now my parents mm-hmm. and I was in those authoritarian, authoritarian situations again mm-hmm. where I wasn't allowed to feel, I wasn't allowed to be mm-hmm. me. I was tortured and, you know, all these other things. Mm-hmm. Um, it just makes me feel like it's never going to maybe change. Change. So like it it's does. it's so deeply etched yeah. that... I, I hear what you're saying and I will tell you this. The brain is an incredible organ. And there's something called neuroplasticity, Mm -hmm. which means we are ever changing, we are ever evolving, we are always learning. And if we are able, and not everyone is able to, but you are, it's why you're doing the heel squad. If we as individuals are able to take in new information, learn from it, grow, and actually apply it, then yes, we're changing. And yes, our brain is getting smarter and healthier. And when that happens, our body gets healthier as well. So just by nature of what you're doing you are evolving and you are learning and you are growing and you are becoming a better person for yourself and a better partner for kevin and a better mom for athena and he's not going to be with us much longer so (laughs) i won't need to worry about being a better partner to him because he's been very shameful in this episode He's been the truth teller, I feel oh, like. Oh, wow. But, you have a defender. <clears throat> well, oh, I will, my goodness. Well, I will say this. <laughs> I'm all about transparency. Yeah. I do think, and I love that you are transparent about your history, and I love that you talk openly about it, because one of the things that I think has become problematic in our society, regardless of what it is, whether it's especially you know as parents and as women, whether it's fertility issues or health issues or parenting we always want to come across as though everything is rosy Mm -hmm. and who has that life like I said I've worked with people who you know all socioeconomic backgrounds all religious backgrounds um, celebrities your everyday people like no one has it quote easy we're all going through life right and life is is challenging and beautiful and joyful and hard it's all of it and when we don't share those experiences when we're not truthful especially when you have a platform you or anyone else and they don't use that platform to be honest it's not fair to the people that you're listening that are listening to you yeah right it's it's actually one of the things that i don't like about influencer culture Right. I feel that there are a lot of not that you are like the opposite of this, but there are a lot of influencers out there, a lot of mom influencers out there that are portraying this lifestyle of beauty and happy and wearing great clothes and the makeup. And that is not real life. You know, it's just it's not and it's not um, relatable. And so, you know, parenting is hard. Being a partner is hard. Marriage is hard. Relationships are hard. Friendships are hard. It's all incredible and rewarding and and lovely but it's not easy and so the fact that you are using your platform to talk openly and honestly even about things like the relationship with your brother i love that and i I love that you're doing that because that's what makes you relatable and it's why people will continue to come back to you thank you so thank you for doing that oh thank you yeah well friends we've learned a lot haven't we (laughs) natasha has one more thing for us she says yes Carry on, Natasha. I did stop you having a conversation earlier about what is the next phase for Athena. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we were talking off camera that Athena's four months. And you said this is the moment where things are about to change. So what do I have to look forward to? So I love the four month. I call it the rebirth, okay? Excuse me. A lot of people refer 
to the first three to three and a half months that a child is out in the world as the fourth trimester. Okay. I'm sure. Have you heard that before? I have not. Oh, okay. So the fourth trimester is really about, you know, the child. I'm sure Athena has been mushy and yummy and lovely so and sleeping. Mushy. So yeah. yummy. And you just love smelling the top of her head and just holding her. And she just, right, it's all those good moments. And by the way, amazing hormones for you and for her and the bonding. And hopefully you've all done lots of skin to skin. It's yeah. all so important. Okay, four months. It is the cognitive rebirth. So basically her brain goes, woo, I'm here. And all of a sudden she's going to be really awake to the world, which means that when you're bottle feeding her, she's going to be looking all over the place. It might become a little bit more challenging. So I'm not her most important entertainment. Yeah. Um, it's, you are, you do, you are, and you continue. She's to be. already looking up. Yeah. So, but that's the thing. So she is going to become more and more interested in what's going on around her. And this is actually, it's a very exciting time because you get to be the facilitator of the world around her. And this is where I say, parent in with parents, you really become her very first teacher, right? So you see her looking at a tree. Athena, that's a tree. Let's go touch the tree and feel the leaves. And I do that it's with good. her. I love that. I love. Yeah. that because a lot of parents you know you have to make that transition from just being quiet and holding them and listening to music and being fun to really interacting with them and she's going to be so aware of everything that's happening and you can talk to her and you narrate narrate everything right so yeah. this is one of the beautiful things when there is a sibling parents don't have to narrate as much because the siblings usually talking to their sibling right nonstop. but when it's your first child or if it's an only child you really want to be narrating every single thing you are talking to her nonstop, and she's gonna you know you can put her in what we call like a little tripod stance where you um i would model it if she was here but you basically like put her hands down in between her legs and you have her legs like this and you kind of put her like that and so she's leaning over and she'll be able to like look at you at the beginning of looking up and she'll slowly like push herself up and she'll get this core strength. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really cool. And then that will translate into, you know, the crawling and the, it just, it's, it's the rolling. It just, it's, it's, you're in it now. Like it's, yeah. you know, the infancy stage is coming to an end and you're going into the toddler, the toddler stage. That's what I was feeling like just yesterday. I was holding her and she was so big. I'm like, oh my God, you're not an infant anymore. No. Yeah. And so every morning, because usually at night we don't really get to it, I, every morning I, I say our prayers mm -hmm. with her mm -hmm. and we thank God and, you know, we do our whole thing mm -hmm. and we say hi to grandma in heaven. And and I do, I take her like through the trees. I'm like, this is a leaf. These mm -hmm. are roses and stuff. So because um, I read that it's important to talk to them and tell them like, I'm changing your diaper right yep. now yep. and I'm just cleaning yeah, you right. and yep letting her know all those things but the other thing i've been doing because she's making so many noises yes is i'll i'll match her noise perfect perfect and, or i'll initiate to get her going and she loves, loves it. it yeah but i'll share with you guys one little moment <laughs> before we go it was really cute the other day she said i love you oh yep oh well, this did. was not the other day this was like a week ago she wasn't she's let's see okay so i'm gonna let you hear it yeah you can tell me what you think yes so here she is with me. Oh, she's so adorable. And I'm playing with her. We get closer to the mic, honey. Let me get to it. So I'm gonna get it queued up. You're the light. You're the light. Okay, here it comes. I say I love you. Oops. And then she says I love you back stopped because my phone just got interrupted sorry guys Come on, you I love you. <laughs> yeah i <laughs> yeah. i love right? that yeah it totally sound i hear it i, I hear, hear it I yeah was like, she said i love you well she's responding to you right yeah. like she is definitely in it with you and that's the four month reawakening <laughs> Like she's interacting with you. She's interacting with the world around her. She's aware and she wants to learn. They, she, Like I said before, she is like a sponge. So every single thing that you guys can do with her, for her, to her, you know, the narration, yes, like do it, expose her. We, as I said before, we are an accumulation of our experiences. And a lot of people don't understand that those experiences start when that baby is an infant.
Oh, so, I'm yeah. so excited for yeah. every. It's gonna second. only get better. You're gonna, you're gonna. People say to me, "What stage do you like the most?" I'm like, you know, every time I went through a stage, I just really enjoyed it, and I love the stage that I was in. <sighs> I do have some favorites, but I, they're just, they're all wonderful. I love every second, yeah. every second. I kiss her feet all day long, and then I. Oh my God, I love her so much. Why isn't much. she in here? I want to see this little I precious. Like... We'll, we'll introduce you after <laughs> yeah. for sure. I used to have her baby um, basket in yeah, here. Yeah, right here. You guys have to set up a little like a corner, or, you know, an area where she can have her, except that yeah. she's going to be crawling before you know it. And then you have to be really careful. I then know. she's going to get into everything. So funny. So don't do too much baby proofing. Be careful with how much you do. That's a. It's, what do you mean? Well, a lot. there are a lot of people who they baby proof every single thing. Right. And and so I say that there are only a few things you really need to baby proof. The rest you actually don't want to do because you want them to learn how to live in the real world. And if they're yeah. And if so you're, plugs are a must, right? Absolutely. Plugs are a must, pool gates, something at the top and the bottom of the stairs, and anything that has medicine or chemicals needs to get locked. What but, about corners? Yeah, counter see, corners. I don't like doing corners. Okay. Unless you have something that's really, really sharp. I, I don't like doing corners. I don't like locking toilets. I mean, things that are at their level, like covers yeah. and things, they should be able to open them and, cause <laughs> and go you in. Did, yeah, I, I have a picture of me in the covers. Yes, I took everything I out that. as a little kid. But so you, so here's the thing. You were an experimenter. Yeah. You were a scientist. You were a photo, you were, this is her first school is your home. Your home is her first environment that she explores and learns about the world. And so you want it to be as representative of the world as it can be. If you place a safety on every single thing, how will she know when she's at a restaurant with you that, you know, how to manage herself in that environment? Good point. Yeah. Thank you. You know a thing or two about this kid's <laughs> little, stuff, A huh? little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time. I love it. So what's your opinion on letting them fall? I've heard different moms. I've said, yeah. I've heard, I was talking to one mom at a coffee shop and she said, no, I'm his protector. Yeah. I'm here to stop him. Then I've had other parents who are like, nope, I l let them fall, let them bump their head, let yeah. them learn. Like, yeah. Absolutely. So what do you think? Uh, let them fall. They need to learn. Absolutely. Now, when they have fallen, you can go to them and say, and this is be very careful. I have a lot of parents who say to me, I tell them, you're OK. You're OK. Uh uh. You have to ask them, are, you, are okay? you OK? Did that hurt? What happened? Did you notice that there was a step there? Point out because, again, you are their first teacher. Mm. So you have to be, you know, I, I, I say to the parents, you want them to fall. You want them to bump their heads. Of course, we don't want our children to get really sick. We don't want them to end up in the hospital. But you know what? When they do have these experiences, they learn. And how mm. are they going to learn if a mom or a dad is constantly taking all of the things out of their way? How are they going to learn? And that's their first. How are they going to become resilient and yeah. resourceful? And then they become millennials. Yes. Oh, God, Honey. Kevin. What? We could have a whole conversation about that. <laughs> or Gen Z. We don't. Millennials, yeah, no. We've, we found that. Because a, we were all so perfect. Right. right. Uh, Maria, here's what I say about that. We're the run. Well, my generation, we're the, we're the ones who raised them. So we're way worse. It's our so there fault. we go. It's not their fault. We're, We're not millennial fault. hating it's anymore. Well, you're younger, Marissa, <laughs> but no, yeah, because we didn't do all the things you're saying here, you know. So that's why we, we, we. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of us, um, and I would have done this too in my twenties and thirties. We just went to the other extreme. What do you mean? Over coddling. Oh yeah. Reduce oh, all sure. the pain. Yes. Provide all the pleasure. Yes. And again, like you had said earlier, our emotions. Oh yeah getting involved so oh, we put our, our parents our yeah. grandparents their emotions got involved i think in terms of being authoritarian being strict yeah getting angry the strap the belt we went the other way yes we did. which was we'll take away all the pain yep it's pleasure pleasure fun 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 i, I don't want you to deal with what i dealt with and now no kevin you're 100 percent right thank you maria yeah great it just yeah my wife is just so shameful to me. It's terrible. No, that's really true. What though. would you like played at your funeral, honey? <laughs> I don't know what I'm having at the funeral, but we do know what's on the gravestone. Now, Natasha, do you remember what's going to be on, on the both sides? How do you sides? know what's on the gravestone? Do you remember? Nobody Natasha? tried harder. Few, few. Because I can't say nobody. Harder. That's two. You, there's other people I'm sure tried. Few tried try. harder. Few tried harder, and then. Oh, I get it now. Too dumb to quit. Too dumb to quit. And then, no, and as I'm being loaded in, it'll be my mom and Maria going, oh, wait, I get it now. I get everything he was saying. <laughs> oh. Do the two of you agree on business decisions? Yeah, these days we do. Pretty much. Yeah, we yeah. do. 
What about parenting? I'm curious. How has it so far been same. with parenting? Are you, do you find good. that you're on the same Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So when far. you're together for so long, early on, no for business, mm -hmm. but then we both came together. Mm -hmm. You know, I slowed down. She sped up. Mm -hmm. I think she got more aggressive. I got less aggressive mm -hmm. in business. And then that we're at a really nice place now. And mm -hmm. I think the same with parents. But I think with time, you get to know each other. Like we were yeah. parents to our dogs. Yeah. So we found our roles through the dog. <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> true. So no, he's right. the administrator. I'm the diagnoser. <laughs> we know what we do best. Mm -hmm. So I'm more working class. I'm with the nurses and that, you know, where they're doing it. We're dumping the bedpans. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, doing man. all that. I'm the PhD. <laughs> Maria's the diagnoser. She comes in, like, mm. yeah, but, I think it's a kidney issue. Yep, great. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's true. Dogs are a really good training ground for kids. I, I know they were. Yeah. Good. I, they I, were had a, because... I had a, a male friend laugh at me, and I said, two reasons you're laughing. One, you've never had dogs, uh -huh. and two, you're a male. Like, you never <laughs> had a rate. You would never had to be a mom. Yeah. yeah. And I will tell you why. We had why, handicapped dogs, knock on sick wood, dogs. Being the night nurse has been a layup. Obviously, Athena's an amazing baby, so mm -hmm. very blessed. Mm -hmm. But for me... Our dogs in the last 20 years, Marissa, have had me up All at least time. once a night, but many times, three times a night. Diarrhea, uh, elderly, sicknesses, medications yeah. in the Brats. middle of the night. Brats. Um, I have, and, and Maria. Yeah, he's actually have, sleeping now. And Maria have it, right, I'm sleeping more now. <laughs> With, with the baby, baby. than the dog. Yeah, so for hilarious. me, it was all, it's just, right. and you know, making the bottle yeah. and all that, I used to have, Not a big deal. all their diets were different yeah. and they all required, you know, we took all the dogs. It was the, it's the land of misfit toys. No one wanted yeah. any of our babies. And yeah. then everyone was like, wow, your babies are so incredible. I'm like, well, anyone could have had them, Yeah. but we, you know, you but loved them and they need, but they all required special yeah. and they still do medications and diets. And, and so it's all i say to anyone have a dog a couple have a absolutely have a dog first because it does yeah. really yeah. help. we've been together for 20 26 years i mean at this that's point that's amazing that you guys have been together that we long. know enough you I know mean, each other very well yeah it doesn't mean we're not yeah. gonna have yeah. disagreements i'm sure down the line about a lot of things but well typically people come to the proverbial parenting table with very different ideas of how they want to be a parent because it's generally based in what they saw modeled to them yeah. and usually two people are not didn't come from the same type of household and a lot of times it can be a Backhander. reason what <laughs> exactly Funny. and that it can be a reason right yeah. for it's it's why a lot of couples have challenges when their children are young the fact that you two have been together for so long i would guess that you won't have a lot of those challenges yeah i hope not yeah. we've had enough challenges i think yeah. to yeah. date but we have a lot of Marissa, this was a lot such of a joy i feel like we'll have to do this again because we have yeah. so much more to get to yeah, that we probably didn't get lovely. to thank you but um we will lot. put everything marissa in the summary of this episode for you guys to find her on instagram and and such and in the meantime friends be nice people say goodbye to kevin <laughs> <laughs> be nice people make good choices and be present this podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare care program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.